Autodesk Inventor comes with a software developer's kit, which is better known as an SDK. And that SDK folder can be located in the Program Files directory underneath Autodesk, inside in Inventor 2011 or whichever version of Inventor you're running. And if you open up that SDK folder, you're going to find a file called usertools.msi, which is a Microsoft installer file. And when you run that, it's going to drop in this folder called user tools. And when we open that, you're going to find a series of folders that contain uh, standalone applications as well as add-ins to Inventor. The one in particular I'm going to be talking about is the general tools add-in. And the general tools add-in contains two uh, tools, which are a spell checker and a variable pitch helix command. Now, the spell checker is something I've used in the past, but I haven't with uh, Inventor 2011. And when I tried to use it recently, I actually kind of ran into some problems uh, using it. Uh, what it basically does is it's going to launch, when you launch the spell checker tool, it's going to try and launch a Microsoft Word spell checker dialog box. And when it wasn't launching anything, I realized it's probably trying to call into a version of Microsoft Word that I don't have any longer because I have Office 2010 installed. So I checked into the source code and sure enough the reference uh, and under the references tab of the properties was the Microsoft Office 12.0 object library and right now I've already switched them out to the latest version which is 14.0 for Office and also for Word. I rebuilt the add-in to a new directory, registered it, and fired up Inventor. So if we look at the add-in manager, we will see that General Tools is in there and it's loaded. So it works pretty good. And using it is pretty straightforward, so I'm not going to go through that. But one thing I kind of glazed over just now was the register part of it. Uh, this tool comes with a executable that's supposed to register it for you. It was giving me some issues, so I actually just made my own uh, batch file, which uh, registers it for me. And I'm going to provide that over in MCAD forums. And basically, the only what you want to watch out for when you have a batch file or a when you're trying to register your add-ins by using this method, basically the add-in itself is just this DLL file. That's all it is. And what happens is Inventor has to know that it actually exists and then also where it exists, where to look for it. And that's what the registering process does. So if we go back over here to this register file, uh, the .bat, and then you see there's also an unregister, so if you wanted to uh, you know, uninstall it, if you will, then that's what you would run. But basically, if I edit this file, it's really a text file. So you see it opens up Notepad, and it's not there's not much to it. But the most important thing you need to pay attention to is after all of this, this registerassembly.exe slash codebase, and these quotation marks is the directory that it is that the DLL file that I just told you about is located in. And that is the most important thing. So in my case, it's located in this directory. But in your case, it could be located on your desktop. Wherever it's located, you have to put that into this file by editing the file. And then once you've uh, completed your editing, just save it, uh, close it. And then when you actually run it, this is what it'll look like. As long as types registered successfully is shown, then you're good to go. You can ignore all this uh, stuff above that. As long as types registered successfully works, you're good to go. And of course, uh, when you unregister it, the same thing will happen. It'll just say types unregistered successfully. So that's basically what you're going to want to do. Uh, just make sure you right click and edit and not open it in order to change the actual uh, assembly location. And you should be good to go. Now I'm going to have these batch files uh, located at mcadforms.com under a um, forum post that I've started here that, that's about this tool here itself 
and that link is going to be located in the description part of this video here. So hopefully you guys get a, good, a lot of good use out of it and you can understand how to register any add-in DLL files that you get from uh, various third parties.